I recorded for my pre-calculus class yesterday. It was the first time I recorded for them. And I, like, asked them questions on the recording, and I was like, good job. And does anyone have questions? Okay, great. And I just kept doing that. And, and they said, we like that you kept asking us questions, and we couldn't answer. And uh, I said, you never talked to me anyway, so it wasn't really much different. than <laughs> normally, normally I ask them questions, and it's just silence. So I just answer myself anyway. But uh, it was fun. I, I get a it's amusing to me to, re to teach to an empty classroom and ask questions. Um, remember, I'm going to summarize for you here, that you have to get it equal to zero and get a common denominator. And so then we multiply each side by the other denominator. And that's where we are. And so now simplifying the top, 3x minus 2x is x. Negative 6 minus 3 is minus 9. to get to the point of now you can find your solutions. So the solution is just solve the numerator because the denominator doesn't mean anything. It can't equal zero. So we can say that x equals nine, so that solves the top. But remember, you also have to exclude what uh, makes the denominator equal to zero, what's undefined in the problem. So you also have to set each thing in the denominator equal to zero. So that would mean that you could not have x equal to two, and it would also mean that you could not have x equal to negative three halves. So then you take all of those answers and you make your number line. And then a lot of people on the quiz, like you had the right numbers, but then something happened plugging it in. So you want to make sure that you're plugging in those numbers correctly. You're plugging in numbers in those intervals to see what happens. So if you have to pick a number less than negative one and a half, it doesn't matter what you pick. You can pick negative 50 if you want, but I usually just pick the one right next to it. So like I would pick negative two, and I'm going to plug it back in right here. And I'm just trying to see if I get a number less than zero. If it's easier for you to just type it all in, type it all in. I just usually look at the numerator and the denominator. So if I plug in negative number and I subtract nine from it, it's still negative on the top. And then on the bottom, um, what's that going to be? Negative 4 plus 3 is a negative. Negative 2 minus 2 is a negative. So that would be a negative over a positive, which is a negative, which means I think it works. It's easier for me to do that than actually worry about the number. But if, it's be if that makes no sense to you, just type it in and do the number. Between negative 3 halves and 2 is my favorite number, 0. And I'm going to plug 0 in there because it's easy to see that I would get negative 9 on the top, and on the bottom I would get 3 times negative 2, which is a negative over a negative, which is a positive, so that doesn't work. And if I pick 3, because that's in between 2 and 9, I'm going to get a negative, a positive, and a positive. That's also a negative. And if I pick a number bigger than 9, does that work? Does that one work? Did I do that right? If I pick 10, I get a positive. I get all positives, right? That doesn't work. So my answer is giving that in interval notation. I will tell you on the test, it says write your answer in interval notation. So you have to say everything. Um, from negative infinity up to negative 3 halves. Not included, because that sign tells me right there it's not included. And everything between 2 and 9. And you really should, if you have more than one interval, you're supposed to use that union symbol if you're using interval notation. That's a lot of work, right? Not all the problems on the test are that much work, but that one's a lot of work. The very beginning of your review was all that I stuff, right? That's a lot of points of your test is doing the I stuff, like adding with I, multiplying with I, getting rid of I in the denominator. Those don't take nearly as long as that. And 20 points of your test, 20% of your test is doing I stuff. So hopefully that's a good 20%, right? Not going to That's an I <laughs> Like, number one on your test is 20 points because it's four parts, and each part's worth five points. So, just, just saying, don't mess up the eyes. It's really like 
four problems, but it's all numbers, just number one. And I picked the questions. Oh, that's what I want to say. I can't do any more than give you the answer. That's what I want to say. <laughs> we don't want I's in our denominator just like we don't want radicals. So you have to know to multiply by the conjugate. So you take uh, what's in the denominator and you multiply by exactly that except for you change the middle sign. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. And when you do this and you multiply it out, the bottom should be a real number. It should have no more I's in it. The top has I's in it. That's okay. So on the bottom, I, Dylan, stop talking. When I multiply this out, I never do the middle part on the bottom because I know it cancels out. But if you want to just check, you can multiply it out. And you can say 2 times negative 7i is negative 14i. And 7i times 2 is positive 14i. And 7i times negative 7i is negative 49i squared. And what does i squared equal? Negative one. Great job. So that really becomes four plus forty-nine on the bottom. It's real now. It's no more complex number. On the top, you just spoil it out. Combine like terms. So you would get twelve minus forty-two i minus six i plus twenty-one i squared. I squared is negative one. So twenty-one times negative one is really minus twenty-one. So clean it all up on the bottom, you get 53. And on the top, you get 12 minus 21, which is negative 9. And negative 42i minus 6i is negative 48i. You do want to look to see if that bottom number has the same factor as the top numbers, and we could simplify it, but 53 is a prime number, so I think we can do nothing else. Yes? It is done because we got rid of the i uh, in the bottom. If you prefer, remember, you can write it like this. Negative 9 over 53 minus 48 over 53i. Those are the same answer, whichever you prefer. Dylan, what question did you have? On this, Dylan. Yeah, you just have to spoil it out, combine like terms. I do know that just like on that one quiz, which I know I gave you some that says solve by completing the square, um, I know there's a question on the test that says, like, you must complete the square to solve this. Any other method gets zero points. So that means you're not allowed to factor or do the quadratic formula on those problems. You have to complete the square. As long as you complete the square, right? You cross out, cross out the quadratic formula, and you're done. Checking it. Thirty x squared plus twelve x minus ten x minus four. Thirty x squared. This one. <laughs> minus forty two x. Minus 25x plus 35. That. <laughs> you were giving Brianna a hard time about her question, so I was just trying to tell you that. So. <laughs> but this really isn't so bad, right? The x squared drop out? Because if you subtract 30x squared, <coughs> they cross out. So I would be left with, what is this? 2x minus 4 is less than, I mean greater than or equal to negative 67, is that true? Plus 35. Is that this terrible of numbers? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> just check it. So I'm just going to solve that. It's just a linear equation. So I get 69x is greater than or equal to 39. I 
guess that doesn't work out very nice as a decimal. Um, both of those are divisible by 3, so that would be 13 over 23. I really like that. I bet you have to write an interval notation, so that would be bracket 13 23rds to infinity. Again, lots of steps to mess up some algebra there, but the basic idea is there, uh, and that's what I would be looking for, even if you made uh, a calculation error. The solving part is what I'd be looking for. Any other questions? I've changed the dough into Adam Dash. I have one, but I'm not going to ask. <laughs> ask it, it's okay. Someone else might have another question. Also, we had one like this, maybe not as complicated, the one with a number outside on the last quiz that we took. Before you rewrite your absolute value, remember that you have to get it by itself. So step one is I would subtract one, say two times the absolute value of three minus x is greater than four, and then I could divide by two, I guess x doesn't matter a lot, but divide by two, and I would get the absolute value of three minus x is greater than two. So step one, get the absolute value by itself. Step two, equations or inequalities, you have to set up two problems um, where one's a positive and one's a negative. But with inequalities, remember that it's either an and or an or statement, and you have to flip the sign. So less than means and, greater than means or. That's what I have, like, ingrained in my brain. So less than means and, greater than means or. I know this is an or statement, so I'm going to say 3 minus x is greater than 2 or... 3 minus x, flip the sign, and change the sign of the other number. So I flip my inequality sign, and I make that negative. A lot of people on the quiz forgot to do one of those two things, or didn't get the absolute value by itself. Now you just solve it, and you write it in integral notation, but remember, when you divide by a negative, which we're going to be doing here, then you have to flip your sign. So if I subtract 3, I get negative x is greater than negative 1, which is, means x is less than positive 1, right? When you divide by a negative, you flip your sign. Or, subtract 3, subtract 3, negative x is less than negative 5, or x is greater than positive 5. Everything less than 1, or everything greater than 5. So that's a, a union. So negative infinity to 1, not included, union 5 to If it was an and, if it was less than in the original one, remember that it would just be like one inequality, like everything in between these two numbers. What else you got? This is midpoint formula, not bad to do, but you have to know how to, you, you have to know those formulas or you're going to miss those questions. Also, there's a question about the distance from the x and the y axis, like the one that is on the homework and the one I gave you on your review yesterday, where you just like do the distance formula with a y or x, depending on what's there. Uh, it's a two-day test, so um, like I'll just split it in half based on about like half the questions. Uh, I'm guessing the distance midpoint stuff will be on Monday's part, but the nice thing is whatever's not on tomorrow, you'll know the review. You just switch your point. So like on 27, on page 130, it says find all points on the y-axis that are a distance 5 from the point negative 2, 4. So the y-axis tells us that that's the point 0, comma y. So you use that point and that point, and you set it equal to 5. If it said the x-axis, the only thing that would change is every point on the x-axis is some x and the y is zero. So that's what would change. So if it was a y-axis problem, you would set it up using zero y and the point they gave you. 
x-axis, you got to remember that it's some x-coordinate and then the y is always the same. And then you just have the difference on the right left side. Yes, I think 27 is the exact one we did in our notes. Yes, maybe. Or the exact one I gave you on homework, one or the other. 27 on page 130. I guess it's on a different page. Twenty-seven on page one hundred thirty is the same one we did in the notes, and then I gave you twenty-eight on your homework to do <coughs> for that day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Twenty-eight. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, that's five three. Five. It should say five three, right? We started with section 2-3, and I think we spent two days on that. two days on. And actually, I think we did like 2-6, the rest of 2-6 and 2-7 in one day. Did we do that? Is that correct? So we have like 2-6 and then we have 2-6 slash 2-7 together. And then we have 3-1, which was the distance midpoint. Then I just checked your review if you want to print your review and look at your hand, but I just gave you points for it. So if you did them all separately, I think you should have nine assignments, ten if you count your review. Um, if you want to turn it in today or tomorrow, you can. If you think you're going to use it to review, by all means, keep it until Monday. Um, if you don't have something done, you have till Monday to get it done, um, and then that will be a, a homework grade that goes in. Uh, your quizzes are great things to review as well. Um, looking over the quizzes, you can see that. I will give you respect for just one second. Lovely under basket. Um, if you have other questions over the review that you didn't want to ask in front of everyone, like I'll be happy to answer them. I'm giving you no new homework today except for study. The review problems, again, I picked specifically by looking at the test. Like it's not. No question on that test tomorrow should be a surprise to you because I picked questions out of the book very similar to every question on that test. Um, there is a bonus question. I didn't pick a question similar to that because it is bonus. Um, but uh, it's not that bonus. So still. Perfect. Yeah, you can turn it in. Um, 